Hello and welcome. This is my latest eBay acquisition, a Tektronix RFM 150 analyzer. So initially these were intended to troubleshoot cable systems. So the frequency range on this low end 5 megahertz up to 1 gigahertz. So definitely a lot of frequencies in there. So I was hoping that uh, I could uh, incorporate this as part of my uh, service bench for keeping my uh, HF equipment alive. Another tool to add to the bench. I got a very good deal on it. You know, it was initially sold as used, perfect working order, and uh, we know how that goes on eBay. So uh, I discovered that there was a you know catastrophic problem with this unit, in that uh, it craps out after about 30 minutes of operation. I have to unplug it for about an hour, and then it functions again for another 30 minutes. So taking measurements, you know, 30 minutes is definitely uh, enough time on the bench to uh, get some readings. But who knows, if I pull the covers off, I might be able to resolve whatever the issue is. So it's a very well constructed unit. It's from Tektronix. I think they initially uh, listed these things out at uh, $2,300 or $2,500. Uh, I got, as I said, a very, very, very good price on it. So let's see if I can uh, make use of this. This 150 is their first in a the line. There's also 151. And as far as I can see, the difference is between the two is that the uh, this 150 demodulates FM only. The 151 does AM plus FM. So it'll sweep the band, whatever I decide, from 5 to 1 gigahertz and uh, basically give me a uh, analysis of the band or a specific frequency that I can plug in. This actually works pretty good. I've used this a little bit, get, getting familiar with it. So uh, it is a little cumbersome, the screen is a little bit dim, but uh, it provides results. And uh, that's what I'm looking for. So as I said, it's a very well constructed, very strong strap. You know, this is a business unit, so it's not a toy or toy quality. So here we have the uh, antenna input, 75 ohm, RS-232 input, and a 12 volt common jack input there as well too. This unit does not come with batteries. Uh, I'm pointing this out here, these are uh, Torx bits because uh, I'll be pulling this cover off shortly and uh, taking a peek inside. and. Uh, seeing what I can find because that's what I do I always pull the covers off and see what's inside a uh, little speaker here you know uh, demodulates the FM so it does uh, does do that actually I'm, I'm impressed with it so let's take this over to uh, workbench number two where it's a little safer if I uh, screws drop and you know, I'll be able to find them here on the picnic table. It's basically just <laughs> introduction. I don't want to lose any screws here and, and uh, work here. So let's go over to uh, bench number two 
and to pull the covers off. Here we are at workbench number two, just a couple of feet away from my uh, picnic table, but a uh, better tabletop to work on here. So uh, before I pull the covers off, I just want to give a, a little demo on uh, on what we got uh, to work with here with this. Uh, going to be a poor man spectrum analyzer. Can't afford the high expensive HPs, test sets and whatnot, even even on eBay, they're just uh, pretty steep, so uh, this is peanuts on a dollar compared to those. So if I can uh, make some use of it, that would be great. So I've got power just using some old rabbit ears, still use for those, because that's going to cover uh, the range that this guy uh, will be uh, able to sweep. 5 to 1 gigahertz. That's 5 megahertz. So, uh, I've got the unit ready on and uh, I'm just monitoring a local FM station here. And uh, at best, this screen is difficult to look at. Being that I'm outside with the bright sunlight in my background, sure it doesn't help. So, uh, I'm going to have to get in a position here where I can use my body film and operate all at the same time use my body to kind of reduce the glare so let's I have uh, the volume at zero so that's a local FM station and just because I wanted to do this demo there's some kind of noise relay that's not kicking in right now because you can hear the noise. You know, this is FM, this is crystal clear. And up until now, I was working on it inside, and uh, the FM coming out of that speaker was just, uh, you know, what you'd expect from FM, but... Oh well, there's some way like just not kicking in for this demo here, and I've got some noise. So... You can see level there. Got a VU heater here. I'm not going to go through all the buttons here, but if I go on to this spectrum, it'll give me a spectrum display. And this is only sweeping 400 kilohertz, so 200 side to side at the center frequency here of 97.3. So you can see there's a couple other uh, stations. So I can change that span. Not very much. I can go down to 200. So that's probably how I would use this you know with an HF transmitter or even looking at a CB signal here you know key up can I see that blip there and uh, is there any other blips showing up in the right hand or left hand side and then also I've got a sweep button down here I can sweep uh, higher frequencies say from 50 to say 500 or even 1 gig and just see if I'm getting any uh, spikes or harmonics up in that range. Just give you a better idea on the uh, signal being transmitted. So that's something that right now I don't have the capability of looking at because I don't have an HP test set or uh, spectrum analyzer that what it's supposed to be intended for. So I'm hoping that this guy here can uh, just give me a, a little better insight into uh, into the signal. So enough of that. Let's power this guy off. And let's pull off that back cover. This is phase one. Back screws come off. They're all very lengthy, using a Torx bit. And uh, front co cover is just held on with this one ribbon. So pop that off. And uh, for me to delve any deeper, I want to get back. 
I want to see what's on the top end of that board. And there are some electrolytics that are uh, that are there. So it looks like I need to pop these screws. Let me proceed. So we have a two board design here. A couple more ribbon cables to pop off. One there. And also this guy joins the two boards together. So this one here is defined as an analog converter. And uh, let's see there's some electrolytics here. And those are SMD. Surprised to see uh, a couple uh, axial capacitors here as well too. Well, it looks like it's uh, just come off the factory floor. I think this was uh, built in the early 90s. So nothing obvious here. Just looking at these SMD caps. Just looking to see if there's any kind of bulging going on. No, it almost seems like there's just a slight. But that could be just because I'm looking for something like that. So that's something there, you know, 10 volt, 1000 microfarad. You know, I can pop one end off. Just get a measurement. But overall, you know, nothing, nothing obviously wrong. You know, I, I am hearing a couple relays clicking in here and, you know, not doing their job actually, speaking such. You know, there is that, uh, re there is a relay. Pretty high tech, no doubt. One giant heat sink here, and uh, I don't know if it's heat sink uh, cover. Or, well, I guess that's covering that certain part of the part of the bar board. All right. Well, as far as I know, nobody's uh, done a deep dive into an RFM. Signal Scout, so here's the first one on eBay. Nothing more to do in this inspection. This goes down to the serious workbench now. And uh, let's uh, get out a meter and uh, measure a few things. I set the unit up on top of my uh, frequency counter here and rest of my uh, test equipment. And uh, I think that's a good home for it. So what I've got on the display is a uh, stored result that uh, I keyed up a radio on uh, 27400. And this uh, display here is looking at a 100 kilohertz plus or minus. And uh, I'm getting a uh, RF signal there. I'm happy with that.
So uh, this will give uh, give me a view on a signal that, like I say, I wasn't able to look at before with my uh, my limited amount of uh, test gear that I do have here. And uh, this will definitely, uh, it'll be beneficial. So, you know, at this point in time, I am just going to uh, operate uh, this as is. And let's just see how annoying this uh, unit becomes, uh, you know, with it shutting off after a half hour or so. So I'm just going to leave it. And uh, whether or not I go to a, a part two on this, that'll all depend on how well it behaves. So in the meantime, thanks for watching this far. See ya.